Planning Time and Zoning Commission. Regular meeting scheduled for May 10th, 2017 will come to order. Uh, we'll call the roll first, Tom. Mr. Crawford? Here. Mr. Seaberger? Here. Mr. Redbacker? Here. Mr. Craig? Here. Uh, Mr. Wolf? And Mr. Harris? Here. I have no one objects. I'm going to dispense with the statement of duties and procedure for conduct of the minutes. There being no members of the public apparently here tonight. Um, are there any changes proposed to the agenda? I have a question. An earlier version of this talked about reviewing the minutes from. February 8th and March 23rd, with the mind towards corrections. Has that been addressed and we're not otherwise worried about those minutes? No, those were approved. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I have an addition uh, under announcements, concerns of the zoning department. Concerns that have to do with old business, new business, and a particular topic? Uh, a particular topic, uh, uh, mainly to uh, give reasons why uh, the January meeting was canceled. Objections to the addition of that matter for to the agenda. Not for me. Okay. We'll accept that addition to the agenda. Going to now to the approval of the minutes from the 41217. Move to approve. Got, uh, does everyone have a copy of the submission by Mr. Rambacher? Terry, you missed that, right? So right, I'm going to abstain. Okay. <clears throat> Could you have a second for approval of the April 12th minutes? Yeah, I second. Any uh, corrections, changes, deletions? If not, uh, all those in favor of approval of the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Not opposed, but abstain. Okay, Mr. Seeberger abstains. All right, so minutes are approved. We'll now go to new business, the wireless communications facility. Text amendment number 569-17, uh, submitted, I believe, by the trustees as a text amendment for our review and public comment tonight. Uh, do, being duly advertised, Tom? Yes. Okay. Uh, just so I understand how this went down, I'm going to ask you, Tom to clarify for me, we had the general discussion, uh, kind of a work session about wireless communications previously, but in the meantime, the trustees have acted and initiated an actual text amendment that's being presented here tonight. Is that correct? No. We I talked believe about it this was initiated. Tom, Tom presented something earlier. Then there were some changes in the political environment or just some of the things he wanted to address and then he, raced, and he we asked, I asked him if he needed more time and he said yes. So he, this is the revised version since we had discussions about the previously submitted version. 
Uh, is that right? It was, it was initially, uh, I asked the board to uh, initiate. Right, on your this, behalf. Because not the trustees, but okay. at this board. And, and, we, and, and that's when we started going through it, and there were some yes. problems with your yes. first draft, and I asked if you wanted more time to go in and pull some stuff out and redo it, if, and that's what we got now. If this was the last meeting you're speaking of, I did not have an opportunity uh, to, to go back over it. Um, unfortunately, I, I didn't have the time. Okay. okay. Well, I'm going to make a motion to approve the proposed amendment for discussion purposes. Second. So let's, dis uh, let's discuss. Well, I would, I mean, there's this new opinion from the Iowa Attorney General that was circulated earlier, yes. which makes it pretty clear that the new law does not apply to townships. That's the main thing I took out of this. Was there anything else of significance that you would want to bring up about that? No, but I uh, really what what pertained to the township was towards the back of the opinion. Right. And uh, there was nothing in there that uh, that prohibited the township from setting its uh, rules. Yeah, the new law only applies to municipalities. Yes, and that was incorporated this, municipalities. And that's what this was the main thrust of this Attorney General question and answer. Okay, that's why I, that's why I understood it as well. Yes. <coughs> All right. Is there any concern by any of the uh, members that? Regardless of whether the new law, Senate Bill 331, uh, and the pending litigation around that may not apply to townships, Do we, are, are townships otherwise restricted from regulating cellular communication towers and related facilities? I have that concern, yes. As do I. <coughs> Does it mean I'm not? Uh, willing to within the limits of our authority uh, assure aesthetic and aesthetically pleasing and safe uh, facilities of those nature in our township. Um, that's why I asked Tom if the trustees have actually seen this, was this one of the ones that they've already are pushing through or, or no, what they we, we are initiating? Yes, they your... received a copy just to, to browse through and for comments. I've received nothing from them okay. at this time. And so um, there's been no legal opinion then from the township law director as to whether we are allowed to regulate in this fashion? There has not. I, I delivered a copy of this to our law director and have not received okay. any word. Along those lines, I would point out on the um, RPC, right. uh, item 12, they're unsure of the ability of the townships to regulate wireless communication facilities located inside public right-of-ways as opposed to outside. That's the two categories we're addressing and has requested a legal opinion from the prosecutor's office. I'm assuming that has not, we have not received an answer to that yet. No, I uh, contacted RPC and they said, uh, based on the AG's uh, opinion, the prosecuting attorney is now formulating an opinion on, on the, our ability to regulate. They indicate any time frame when we might expect to hear something. No, I, I would hope soon, but there was no, no definite. He is working on it. I happened to notice in driving on Market Avenue at approximately 18th Street Northwest in Canton City. If you look, um, I think it's near the Coleman apartment housing unit, whatever. If you look, is that near the lakeside? No, it's 
on the market uh, in, in Canton, uh, 18th of market property. There is a a like a commercial rental type housing building that has. If you look up on it, there is a cluster of what I'm thinking are these um, small cell facilities, and it is a monstrosity. It's visually awful looking. Mm -hmm. Now, I have mixed feelings about the idea of this whole thing because I like the idea of there being technology and the township being um, the beneficiary of new technologies, especially for convenience and communications and daily uses and other things our residents are going to need. But I'm also concerned about the unsightliness and the visual pollution, if you will, of our open spaces. So in that regard, Tom, has um, you're being, you're the primary, I think it would be fair to say, draftsman of the proposal that's before us. Would that be yes. fair? Um, where did you draw the line and where is your balance uh, as a planner in addressing both the needs of our citizenry for technological advances while at the same time um, trying to safeguard uh, the aesthetics and the uh, well-being of our residents. Where did you come down on that? How, how could you point us or show us where, where you came down on that? One of the main things that uh, I was looking at uh, is to make sure that the towers were camouflaged. Uh, they, the technology um, is such today that they can incorporate, uh, instead of having 28, 32 cubic feet of, of boxes hanging onto these towers, uh, they can put it all within the tower. It makes the tower fatter, mm -hmm. but they can make it look like uh, uh, just a metal pole, uh, a clean metal pole with a, uh, an antenna on the top. The antenna is going to be a cylindrical looking object at the very top. Um, and that was one of the things that I, I put in here, right. uh, is to assure that it's camouflage. So, um, you're, so you're defining camouflage as um, minimizing the footprint, if you will, as opposed to actually putting um, both. Oh, uh, some sort of screening around it or on it, because my understanding is screening really wouldn't be the kind of thing it would actually disrupt the signal or reduce the effect of in the some cases. Now my goal in camouflaging, my goal was to uh, lessen the obtrusiveness of that tower. Um, uh, Talk about painting it or making it fit into the well. They they can the make it. They can make it look almost any way you want it to look. If you go onto the internet and look at pictures of, of, of small cells, they've got um, uh, cells that look like a cross in front of the church. They've got cells that look like a, uh, a clock tower. Um, they've got just cells that are, are objects that are in the street in the right of way. Uh, it, you can make them so that they don't have all this material hanging out over them, uh, like Steve was saying, and just being obtrusive. Did, did you use the word camouflage anywhere where we could actually yes. clarify what that meant? That was a concern for me. What exactly meant by camouflage? And now I'm understanding you're, you're to, to be blending in with the surroundings and to minimize its intrusiveness into the lines of sight. Whether it be by color, the color is really should be such that they don't draw attention, but it's mainly the design. Design and construction, now let's see, there's design and construction on page seven, and then again on page 10. And I know there's camouflage in here because that key defines it. <coughs> stealth technology, on page, page two. two. Page two, number nine, talk about stealth technology. <clears throat> which I actually propose amendments to that section. That's, that's where he starts talking about it. And then there's 
I think it talks about camouflage at least one other place. Remember where that was, Tom? No, I'm looking for it now. By the way, this is um, a seemingly very well written in the sense that there are a lot of terms and you, I see that you've made a significant uh, effort to try to make sure that the, the layperson can understand particularly each one. Were you able to find some sort of resource to, that this was modeled after or were they gathered from a number of sources? It was gathered from a number of sources, a number of, uh, uh, there's not very many townships, uh, I think I found one in Ohio. Uh, larger cities have the problem that we can't model after those. But I was able to review those uh, and pick, uh, like camouflaging, pick some of the Definitions items. Definitions and such? Yes, okay. uh, out of them. Um. Yes, this, I think the main thing is in page two, number nine. Yeah. It talks about painting and screen. Do we require a permittee to apply stealth technology as a condition of permit? I, I, I like that definition of stealth, but I'm wondering if do we actually have the meat of that in a, require, a permit requirement? I see um, that it talks about um, design and construction where feasible and blending, but it. For example, on page seven, number six, design and construction, should we actually say uh, where feasible appropriate shall be constructed to blend with learning using stealth technology, which we've already defined? One of the things that uh, is that if we if we do not have a resolution, we have no power to regulate, and and so we do need some type of resolution dealing. Um, I don't know if we have to have them. I like his point, though. There's no reason why we can't say using stealth technology where possible. Yeah. Or right. in compliance with the, these. Or, these or just using stealth stealth technology as three words added to the end of six yeah. A on page seven. And the same on page nine. I think it's nine. No, maybe not ten. Let me ask this, uh, Mr. Chairman, in order to do this in a logical manner. It talks about stealth there. There's, there's two discussions. So one is, first of all, you know, the feasibility or desirability of passing some kind of resolution. And then second, assuming that the answer to the first question is yes, the second might be you know, to go page by page for any possible edits. Uh, in the RPC report, it says uh, including pending litigation in nearby counties. Does anybody know what that litigation is or what the outcome has been? I do not. Uh, so I think they're talking about Senate Bill 331, which is the municipal 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 policy. Incorporated uh, municipalities, yes. That may be, that's, the, that's why I took that to me. It does not apply to us. Well, according to the Attorney General, it does. Right. In the May 1st opinion that we just got today. That's why. However, my question, earlier question wasn't whether the new Senate bill restricts it, it's whether we have restrictions from our previous, or general restrictions against cell tower and telecommunications that, I, uh, that townships, that apply to townships. There are restrictions that I believe we still have something in here mm -hmm. that we need to delete. Uh, things like, um, um, oh my gosh, um, our ability to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm it's okay. not even here. Well, I, I like, I, let's go back to Terry's point. Let's, we should vote on whether we think we should. All right, well. Because, um, I mean, the recommendation RCP is to deny it. Well, I'd be I'd be comfortable. We have a motion uh, and a second to approve the application. I'd be comfortable in just during this discussion have a general show of hands of as to whether 
there's an inclination to approve any version of such a regulation. And then if we have a consensus that in discussion that, that, there's, that we would approve some, we consider approving some version, then we go further to discuss amendments to the particulars of the uh, proposed amendment. Yeah. My, my, thinking, my thinking is this, I agree with it, uh, if, if we can do some kind of regulation that we ought to, uh, the question is uh, what, I don't know that anybody necessarily, you know, any communications provider that wants to be a quote unquote good neighbor would find much of this objection over an industry group and might well sue on the theory that, uh oh, here's a township, even a home rule township, attempting to regulate our facilities. We better nip this in the bud. Uh, let's go with file suit against a plain township where I don't which you know that's fine I mean, plain township can defend itself what I don't know is whether such a lawsuit would be the kind you know, that would carry the risk of uh, say attorney fee shifting or or damages uh, I'd be comfortable recommending something that uh, has to first pass the muster of our law director before I mean, as one of the as one of the recommendations, uh, the one we send it. Uh, sure, we're when you're at the cutting edge of something and you don't know whether you cross the edge or not. I think it's a pre and although there are some lawyers on this board, we all know none of us are giving a legal opinion as to the merits or the legality or the appropriateness of this. We're we're doing this as planners and uh, and not as attorneys. I, I agree with that, and one thing, and it's us, us recommending this to the trustees, uh, if, or some version of this to the trustees, uh, certainly gives Eric Williams uh, the water director time and to delve into whether we are inviting a, a destructive lawsuit or not. Well, that being said, uh, is there a consensus? I agree with Terry. I'd like to do something if we can, and I'd like to go through this and then make it uh, conditional upon uh, approval by the law director that we're not the township's not getting itself in the hot water. Because I think uh, Tom, part of what Tom's doing here is he wants to get this going before the uh, the the, uh, the bad actors start moving in. Yeah, I, I understand. And, uh, Frankly, if I'm the trustees and I see you know, that this has been uh, afforded you know, to us, uh, I bet you anything that they would be contacting their, well, they've already contacted, somebody's contacted the prosecutor's office, but I think this would be well worthwhile for the law director to take a look at it also. Um, are there any applications or uh, inquiries pending from potential uh, applicants to to construct facilities that would be regulated by this if it went into effect? Fortunately, we do not have any uh, permits that have been uh, brought in uh, because we have a shot clock that we have to go by when they when they do get here. Mm -hmm. um, but we have had uh, three inquiries about placing um, uh, towers within the township. One of those was from mobilities which uh, is one of the bad actors in that field. They want to put allegedly a, bad actors. They yeah. want to put 150 <laughs> allegedly. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, they want to put a 150 foot tower down near uh, uh, the fire station on uh, Middle Branch, mm -hmm. uh, off in the neighborhood. Without getting into names, my only concern was: Are we doing this in a preemptive fashion, hoping to? have a, uh, our regulations in place if and when the need would arise, as opposed to are we trying to um, stave off uh, a concern that's already here? Uh, the former? Preemptive, yeah. Okay. And so... Which would be safer in my opinion. And, and again, I want to address something Terry said about the likelihood that the good actors, 
or whatever phrase you use, being public utilities and such, do not want to alienate customers that are also our citizenry. Right. It sounds like what might have been meant when the discussion was of a bad actor, it was of an entity that might not have that same uh, perspective where their inclination would be to put up a facility clearly for business reasons, rent as much space on it as they can to a number of providers, stack it full, make it a messy looking thing just so they can pull in big bucks and not regard the, and I don't, I'm not saying anybody's doing that, but that's the kind of thing that maybe we don't want to have Thank happen. You. Yes. Okay, so that being said, do we, can I have a show of hands of those people that want to proceed to go line by line or page by page to come up with at least a proposal to submit to the trustees? Yes. Okay, it looks unanimous. Might I add something, sir? There are sections in here that aren't necessarily needed for right-of-way cell towers. If you would like or want to consider removing those sections, uh, non-tower-based wireless communications facilities outside of the public right-of-way. We already have some regulations I wanted to add to that, but to make this easier, we could stay within the right of way. That's what we're really concerned with at this well, time. Why don't we see how far we get from the right of way ones and then see where we are. How's that? And for one, um, I wouldn't distinguish personally myself between a obnoxious facility that's in the right of way versus one that's 10 feet uh, in on off the right away from private property that's still uh, well, we might have unacceptable. A little, we might have a little bit more authority in the outside the right of ways, correct? Yes. So that's why there would be we would might want to distinguish them because even if we get zapped on something inside the right of way, it still may be enforceable outside. In other words, in other words, uh, part of the resolution is uh, tells to get involved with the remainder of these sort of uh, good. Yes. And so I mean, the purpose of separating would be what? To, provide, to, to avoid uh, commingling them so that it, it, they would not be applied if, if uh, lawfully applied to private plans, they would not be thrown out as uh, too general because they also apply to uh, public plans that we are not allowed to regulate if, if determined legally? No, I mean, if you have a, if you have a resident, I'm just simplifying yeah. it. A resolution with the two sections, the one regulating you know, within the public right of ways and the other regulating outside of the public right of ways. Uh, and, and it's determined that, hey, you can't do anything you know, to regulate anything within a public right of way. Then that part of the resolution you know, might you know, be uh, stricken, and we still have you know, the Second section, which would take care of the structures within or outside of the right of way. If they're co-mingled, then the whole and the resolution is found unlawful by a court, then we're left with nothing, no protection. That's kind of what you're saying too. You know? You're thinking the both the both the non-right of way and the right of way provisions would be struck down by a court if determined that just the public right-of-way regulation is problematic? Well, I mean, no, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is uh, as long as we make, as, as long as there's distinctions throughout the, between the inside and outside, that, that, that those that pertain to outside the right-of-way may survive the striking of regulations against those inside yeah, the right -of -way. I look, If I may, I look at it this way. There's there's more. There's already a bunch of law about what goes on inside a public right of way. Yep. And we may do something where the section of our resolution, in whole or maybe just in part, goes too far. Yep. Because it's inside the. Because there's some law already dealing with the public right of way, and we go too far. But then that would still work on anything outside the public right of way. So even if. It's zapped even a small part or all of the 
part of this regulation of the resolution on public right of way, we still have the other stuff still intact. If we combine it all in one big block, and it's easy to just wipe out the whole thing. Exactly. If there, if there is a problem with it, now we're not trying to create something with a problem, but you know, we're kind of cut. Okay, I'm going to ask the question then. How many are generally in favor of going forward with some sort of wireless communication regulations um, outside the public rights of way tonight? Yes. Okay. Okay. How many are in favor of separating those regulations differently than is proposed in the amendment? I think the amendment is separated. Yeah, it does. Uh, the way I read it, it is separated. Okay, so you're up, you would be okay with the approach that's presented by the proposed amendment? Yeah, this was brought up. Tom was suggesting that maybe we could bypass some of this tonight and get something done tonight without looking at both paths of it. Oh. And what I'm saying, it's, it's written up that way. Let's go as far as we can tonight. Which one did you want us to address first, public or non-public? Uh, the uh, public right away. All right, so we do the public We're right away, and if it's you know 9:30, we want to leave, and we haven't gotten to the other half. We can decide what to do then. That's what I'm thinking. Well, Tom, if we have to, uh, RPC indicated some grammatical corrections that they highlighted in the mark. Did we make this? We have made corrections that are on the ones that we have. On the ones we have. Can we do it? Okay. So, okay, so, so we don't have to. So the, the new, the one that's in front of us tonight is. Correct. Has taken into account the RPC recommendations? Well, for, for grammatical corrections. That's what I have. Grammatical corrections. But not for like renumbering and that sort of thing? Okay. So much time. What I'd like to do is try to eliminate some things that are from RPC. For instance, uh, number six, they say that there are references to subsections that don't exist, and that's an easy fix. Well, I also called Tom earlier, and I pointed out co-location co is spelled differently in different actually, places. Yeah, it might actually spell both ways, but, but we should have it one way. Yeah, and, and like on page one, it says co-location, and I think I see it elsewhere where there, instead of two L's, there's a CO hyphen yeah. location. And in, in parts of the, uh, it's listed that way in the discussion. And there's a couple times there's some quotation marks that are just hanging there for no reason. And I talked to Tom. I think Tom's already taken some steps towards fixing that. But yes. It may not be in the version we've got. No, OK, there's a the computer. Let's go page by page. Let's start with the first page. Well, before we can I, can I make a suggestion? Okay. Is the board aware that we have wireless telecommunication towers as conditional permitted uses in certain districts? But not all. Despite what it says in uh, paragraph three of the RPC. It talks about it's in the RR, R1. And but I don't see it going all the way through I2. If, it's, if they're supposed to be in there, either I missed them or they're not in my copy. But they are in R, R, R1, R1A, R2, R3, and R, well, maybe not R4. I think that the reference in the RPC was just when those facilities are attached to existing buildings or structures. <clears throat> Okay. As opposed to an independent. All right. Well, my point is there are there are a number of pre-existing regular uh, resolutions regarding conditional use of wireless telecommunication telecommunication towers in residential areas, and that we probably at some point should look at those and compare. There may be conflicts with what we're doing. We may need to refer to our new Article Eight uh, Eight Nineteen. In these different sections, like under RR page 14, there's a whole section on how they have to set these things up. 
Would it address? Would it address? Uh, Member Crawford, would it address your concerns if we had just added somewhere in this new amendment that, uh, as pertains to any conflicting uh, requirements of these and existing other regulations, that the more strict shall apply? That's fine. I just want to know if the board was and other members of the board had taken into consideration that there are existing wireless telecommunication tower conditional use provisions in a lot of the residential area sections. Uh, I you almost need a sweeping, a sweeping provision to the effect that to the extent there's any conflicts or ambiguities, uh, my suggestion would be that the, the, the terms set forth within Article, Article 19. 19 will control. I agree. I just... I, that, that would left handed to clean it up as opposed to having to sanitize every... Yeah, it's just they're very specific about some of this stuff. Right. So, I mean, the existing stuff. Uh, your suggestion would be whenever the provisions of, when other provisions of the, uh, to, to the extent that any provisions set forth within any other articles of the resolution conflict with any of the terms set forth within. Is this article 19. 19. The, the terms of Article 19 will hold control. But that's the tie. So we want this to be the main document. Yes. Um, I would suggest we put it at the end, Section A of 19. Um, I would put it in under one, three. I would put it under uh, 1901. Point right at the top. And yeah, it's part of the right purpose. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, if you look at the general provisions, the section 1901.3 is the general provisions. That might be the place to put okay. it. Okay, I'm good with that, sure. And I'm only suggesting the end so we don't have to redo everything else. Sure. So the conflicts, you can label that conflict. Where are you proposing? What page? Uh, page six, right above large uh, capital letter B, towards the bottom of line at line two twenty and a half. Uh, you can label um, twenty one. Call it twenty one. Well, only so because they're talking about moving twenty later. Ooh, um, twenty is problematic there. <coughs> yeah, that's that's under okay. definitions. It's yeah, that's, they suggest we move that anyway, but the RPC suggests yeah. we move that. So I would yeah. say new 20. Um, Page 6, 20 becomes a new... Um, just 20, new and then you can call it um, a resolution of conflict or any... Um, controlling provisions, something like that. There you go, controlling provisions. provisions. And then the, what John was indicating before, we could plug in there. And any yeah, any said, conflict is resolved in favor of this Article 19. To the extent any other provision of the Plain Times of Planning Resolution may conflict with this, the provisions of Article 19 shall apply. Shall control. Shall control. Okay. Now, can we, in the event of any conflict. Okay. That should work. How are you putting ambiguity in there? Any ambiguity? Any conflict or ambiguity? What I'm thinking is, the very specific requirements under the existing conditional use, uses, I don't want to say forget about them. Um, but but that, if they're not conflict, you're not forgetting them. Well, do we give them the argument that, hey, we think that this tells us what to do, and we don't have to re re follow any of those old conditional uses because 19 controls. So you want to say these, I'm just, these I'm provisions shall the section Article 19 provisions shall be in addition to all other provisions of the Plain Time Zoning Relate Resolution, and to the extent yes they may be in conflict with the provisions of Article 19 shall control. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. So
So, gentlemen, uh, page one. Any other corrections, additions, changes, proposals, deletions, discussions about page one? Um, we talked about correcting or, or being consistent with the spelling of the word co-location. To use a CO hyphen, L O C A T I O N. Removal of the, the superfluous quotation mark. Or no, uh, yeah, quotation mark. After the word height. Yeah. That's just a typo in there. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. Right. I think we've already got, I think those are, Tom's hat, got that fixed on the computer already. Yeah, I already went through those. Um, My other question was the co location. I'd like to know which one. The hyphen. I like CO with a hyphen L O C A, uh, for, at least for pronunciation. Reason yes. as a layperson reading it would be able to see co location versus co location. And is this the way we do nines in the code? With the no. Okay. <laughs> so all right. It should be x one x at the very top right hand corner. I would suggest under three where it says tower. Um, it says the like. I would say other structures for wireless communication and or transmission. Or like is just sort of, uh, it, it's, it's, I don't think it's inappropriate, but it's not very statutory or regulatory kind of, kind of language you would see in a regulation. Where are we? At the <clears throat> number three tower, page one. The end of the third line where it says, and the like, I would take the like out and put other structures for or related to wireless communication and or transmission. So we've got a definition of wireless telecommunications antenna. Well, so let me ask you, is this relates? Throughout this, um, proposal there, there's the word or the letters WCF and PROW. Obviously, an abbreviation, it's obvious to me, it's an abbreviation for wireless communication facilities and public right of way. You know, we've never, in, in nowhere in here does it actually say what those mean. Yeah, it does in the beginning. Wireless communication facilities in parentheses WCFs. Well, that's where that's where you define what WCF is. But I mean, you're just saying you're using a shorthand. It's really not okay. a definition. And then right. later you talk about wireless telecommunications facilities. Right. That's what I might consider which is, number eight. Which is a different word. It's got tele in it first. I just want to be consistent so some lawyer later doesn't pick up and say, "Hey, we've got wireless communications, but they're not telecommunications, and you're regulating right. telecommunications, not WCF, or you, or that there's some confusion about what." That one is not the other. I have a question for okay. Tom. Is when you say WCS, is that a term of art, or is that just a definition you picked up from somewhere else that may actually be better if you call them WTFs and change the whole thing to telecommunications? This was a, a term or uh, a term that was used in the in one of the magazines. Okay. The uh, communication magazines for that industry, and uh, that I continued to use it. Well, I would be comfortable at pit number seven just adding to the definition of wireless telecommunication facilities, um, also known as WCFs, comma, means the site structures, blah, 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 blah. Then we, then we dealt with, we don't have to change anything Else, if, we, if those terms are being used interchangeably by you, Tom, that a wireless telecommunications facility is the same as a WCF. So if we put that there, that would cover the rest of everything? I think so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I back just a little bit. The, you're dealing with wireless communications facilities. That's what we're proposing or mm -hmm. going to regulate. And the RPC uh, points out that wireless communications towers are permitted, conditionally permitted uses uh, in the RR district in a wireless telecommunication antenna 
uh, in some other districts. Of course, our zoning code does not appear to define wireless, tele wireless telecommunications towers and wireless communications facilities. Uh, it's not necessarily the same as wireless telecommunications towers unless wireless communications facilities have become conditionally permitted uses in some uh, zoning districts. Uh, you know, this, to be applicable, this would wireless We have an issue with the Congress <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, it's, it's air. We're going off the record for a few minutes. Oh, it's just air? Okay. Back on the record. Yeah, yeah. We, we wireless. I mean, for, bar, for Article 19 to have any effect whatsoever, we probably need to uh, at least amend the RR. Well, how about this? We've got in the conditional use, permitted uses we already have. It's, they already have wireless telecommunication towers, right. wireless telecommunication antenna. Right. And if we defined, if we added a definition of what that a telephone, a wireless communications facility includes those two things. Yeah, yeah the definition says includes, but it's not limited to antennas, poles, towers, etc. Well, I think maybe what we need here if I may be so bold, is to say... What, a reference to definition? I'll say it? wireless. Hold on, we, we, we talk about wireless communication facilities. Include, that's, as a definition, include those two other terms. Includes the wire, wireless telecommunications. Let's powers, make reference to the section wireless numbers of the definitions in Well, we got we, well. That's that's part of the problem. The other part is we, we talk about wireless telecommunication towers in the conditional uses. We need to be consistent. We need to either call them towers or facilities and change the language accordingly. Or. If we're superimposing Article 19 regulations over all of this, just to find, we're going to say that this is in addition to the other provisions of just defined. For example, if we call number seven wireless telecommunication towers, now we've matched up with what we've already used in the conditional uses. Instead of facilities, call it towers. But they are towers. It, wireless telecommunication. Well, but we can define it however we want. And we can say wireless, the new definition, number 16 at the bottom, is wireless communication facilities include 7 and 8, which are towers and antennas. But, Tom, correct me if I'm mistaken. You're looking at these facilities as, for example, uh, small cell technologies and other things that aren't necessarily towers or antennas. Well, and so yeah, we are expanding WCF beyond the definitions that are already there. So, so those would be a subset of WCF, but not the not vice versa. WCFs would not be a subset of those. Right. WCF is all, both of them. All. But and then some. And then some. I mean, it depends on how you define these things. I mean, we're dividing them. Site, structure, equipment, and purposes used to transmit, receive. You can call it a tower, but if you, if you define it that way, we're back to facility. I like your initial thinking of including in the definition number seven, wireless tele of, of Article 19, the, the proposed amendment, that wireless telecommunications facilities, also known as WCF, comma, means everything that's there and that at the end, the two terms that you're saying already just uh, wireless telecommunication power and wireless communication antenna. And that's why I asked what okay. what uh, leave it that way. What amendment or what zoning resolution provision that we're referencing. Antennas and towers are part of number seven's definition. 
can refer. Um, we, we, one way to fix it is just including. Well, I suppose one way to do it is where it says antennas, put paren including wireless telecommunication antenna, which is the term in the conditional uses, the existing conditional uses. Yes? Including those is defined elsewhere and article, whatever. They well, they, with well, they're all over the place, so I don't know. Just, okay. Including wireless telecommunication antennas, and then after towers, including wireless telecommunication towers, and that would take care of it. So wireless communication towers. Yeah, I just don't want there to be a dis difference between the terms used between the existing conditional use and language. And wireless. And I also want to make sure everybody realizes that we're covering that same stuff with this new article. suggested that we not deal with outside of the right of way for this particular um, resolution so that we might get through it in, in a time manner. What's your concern, Terry? The language we put in earlier doesn't I'm satisfy just, you? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just wondering. I mean, yeah. You're right, we have existing uh, regulations, which is condition uh, under conditional uses number 149, as the following regulations shall apply to a wireless telecommunication tower. Uh, what I suspect is that the new Article 19 is intended to replace the condition 149 of course, I mean, the, the downside worry if the Article 19 were stricken. We have no conditional use. Well, I, I look at it as superseding. So the supplemental superseding language that we put in might kill that, deal with that issue. I mean, first of all, 149 is more detailed about things like guy cables and stuff. Yes. It is. And, yes. But, so we leave it there and, it, and, and basically say, you know, this new article supersedes it, so we're not going to have 300 foot towers. Right. So anywhere there's a conflict, the new <coughs> article is going to apply. Where there's right. not a conflict, it's an additional. In essence, this is an overlay of additional regulations. Right. And if there's conflict, or um, as John pointed out, the possibility of of, um, of confusion uh, or uncertainty, then 19 applies. Right. And if 19 gets declared unconstitutional or some other problem, it gets judicially abrogated, we still have 149 in place. Because there are going to be some... Okay. I mean, arguably, going back and changing 149... I just, I believe there. Well, the one way of 
do, and, but then 149 would get pretty extensive. Yeah. No, I, 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 don't, I don't want to repeat what that's for sure. No. I'd like to, it covers areas that this, that 19 does not cover. Right. right. Okay. I'd like to add a 16 on the definitions at page 2 at the end, that P-R-O-W means public right away. Sounds good to me. P -R -W. P -R -O -W. Right of the way. And we want Tom or whoever will have to go through the King Jones abbreviations. Okay. To, to no, good idea. Okay. That's what he used up, Pete. Any proposed changes on page three? Uh, the comma after facilities is not necessary or in the title of section A. Okay. So in the larger print at item A, that actually it's a, a heading for that general provision section. Uh, take, take the comma away after facilities and before WCFs. Yep. Correct. Okay. Any other? Comments or I'm, I'm sorry to, to retreat back to page one. Thing. Okay. Sure. I just forgot that under definitions, uh, we say that for the purpose of this ordinance, the following definitions apply, colon. And then we say right below that as used in this ordinance, the following term shall be means set forth below, colon. It seems to me it's redundant. Yeah. And yeah, it shouldn't should be ordinance, it should be resolution. Uh, article. Or article. Yeah, that, that's probably stuff we borrowed from a municipal ordinance and uh, just mix the terminology. Okay, for purposes of this. Yeah, Tom, I would suggest article. you do a spell check for ordinance and replace it with article. Okay. Look throughout the document. That came up somewhere else too. Um, Because you missed that for co-location as well. Yeah, and the yeah. same thing for municipal, it should read township. So are, are we in agreement, I think, uh, uh, with John, that line 27 on page 1 should just be deleted? Yes. An article in line 27 <coughs> for purposes of this capital A article. So you said line 2, deleted? Line 27. Line 27, where it says, as used in this ordinance. Page one. Page one. Got it. Good catch, John. Page three. Page three. All right, uh, I have something. Uh, there's uh, references to any WCF, any power base WCF, uh, any WCF. Uh, I would, shouldn't we be saying all as opposed to any? Well, I can say that. Or just get rid of the word any. Uh, any is also okay now that I think about it. I'm good with any. Okay. Okay. So, I'm good with any? It's all, all good, but any's good. Paul, Paul it's all good. good. <laughs> it's any good. If it's any good, it's all good. any good, it's any good. It's all good. There we go. All right, so um, what else on page three? Page four. Yeah, I've got something on I know my paragraph or section number seven, identification. At the beginning of the third sentence where it says emergency, I would put a period there and include yeah, line 123, uh, the nature, and I would insert the following after the period, the nature and content of said notice shall be, and then continue on where it says subject to. And then as you get further along there, the word says shall maintain, it should, shall, should be shall contain. I think that's just a typo. 
Okay, so the emergency side is so that uh, safety uh, forces can get a hold of whoever owns it or maintains it if there becomes an issue. Is that right. correct? So the idea of the sign is to be legible and have um, owner contact information? Well, I think it, it, we make it subject to the approval of the township. The township can put on whatever they want as long as it's reasonable. Do we? Is that what we? Is that what we want to do, or do we already know it shall contain a minimum contact information of the owner, or the owner, or the permit holder? I, we could do that too, but I mean, I, I was just well, leaving it open ended. It, any party that could be contacted um, could be a maintenance company. Okay, so who who is it going to be important to contact? The owner or the or whoever's responsible for the maintenance. Because I read otherwise in here that, that the permittee is, is exclusively liable or solely liable for maintaining. So even though they might delegate it. Um, well, it says, shall, shall visibly location the name and phone number of party to contact in the event of an emergency. Okay. And I'm just saying the nature and content of that notice shall be subject to the approval of the township. So it's got to be in a place you can see it. It's got to be big enough you can read it. It's got to be maintained, so if it gets worn out, it's got to be replaced. And you know, the township can call you up and say, hey, you can't read your sign anymore, or somebody knocked your sign down, or used it as a paintball target, or whatever. Would you consider In the word, air, I'm, I'm sorry, would you consider the word identify rather than contain? No, it's, it's duplicative though, Steve, because it, it already provides earlier, identifying the name and phone number of a party to contact, so you really don't need to advance. After two square feet in gross surface area, there should be a period yeah. that's it. Okay. So I'm okay, I'm good with that. Okay. Okay, well then what I would do is, if, if you accept my earlier change, I would make that new paragraph subject to the approval. The nature and content of said notice shall be subject to the approval of the township and make that final sentence as opposed to the second. I just switched the last two sentences. Yeah. So you want it subject to township approval, you just don't like the way it reads there with a comma and... Yeah, I just okay, what's, what's that mean? Okay, how would you say that? How would you phrase that? Ian? The nature and content of said notice shall be shall be subject to approval. So, you know, just contact ABC Security at this 800 number may not be adequate because it's hooked up to an answering machine and doesn't really talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. So, so what what nature would the township regulate as opposed to? Um, I'm thinking it's more like the material, like, like nature. I mean, nature. I'm trying to be very broad. If the okay. township decides they want it to be made out of sterling silver, you know, I mean, that's not unre that's unreasonable. But I mean, if there's a reasonable requirement, like, hey, look, you can't keep putting up paper signs because the wind keeps blowing them away. Okay, so that or you know, we don't like the number you're using because every time we call it, we get a busy signal or an answering machine. It's the purposes of this is for emergencies. You got to. It's got to. It's got to. So nature you're purpose. referring to like construction material and such. No, more general than that. Overall nature. Okay. And on section number eight, it should say any W C F. <laughs> I'm going to keep going until somebody stops me on page right. mm -hmm. uh, Number 10, I'm wondering if on line 141 we should talk about reasonable costs as opposed to costs. Just so it's not subject to... Well, do you think the township would ever incur an unreasonable cost? Well, I think it's, it's somebody looking at it later might say, look, I'm, it's got to be reasonable. 
statute says it's got to be or the resolution says. I'm just throwing it out there. Should we put reasonable in it? I don't want to give anybody else anything to argue about. I don't argue on an individual basis. Okay. That's my that's my view. You know, let's that presume it's going to be reasonable because our township uh, officials and are reasonable people, and somebody wants to challenge it on an individual basis. But and I think the judge would just that anyway. Okay. That's why I didn't. I didn't. That's why I asked as a I question. Know, yeah. It's a good point. Where is the uh, Where is the Eddie you were talking about? I'm going to go back. Page to number number eight. eight. Right to the the number eight. Number eight. eight. It should be instead of all. WCFs, it should be any WCF, no S. How about number seven above it? No, that says all oh, there is fine. Okay. Ian, are you marking up a copy that you'd be willing to share with Tom as we go? I'm trying to. I don't well, know that I catch it all. I will go through the audio. Okay. And, uh, there are you. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm, bring that. And I'm on page, I'm done with page so four. Have anyone else done with page four? No, I'm not. Okay. Four, number thir 13 is abandonment and removal. And I page all the way back to page 16. And we have kind of a lone wolf provision, abandonment. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Those uh, at the very end are, are my notes. I neglected to remove those. Okay, so that's just, oh, that answered one big question for me. Yeah, I'm sorry. So from 561 on? So, so Tom, this was my, my, my meaningful comment. <laughs> so 561 to 571 is like, yeah. is, is superfluous. As well as indemnification too, the last 16 and 17, Tom? Uh, just the last page, or I think. 16 and 17. And 17, yes. Because they asked about that in the RCP, and where well, those sections weren't numbered and it references a statute. Those were just reminders for me to make sure they got inserted. Okay, well, interestingly, did, do, did we insert the dollar limits since we're talking about that? Did you insert the dollar limits for? Commercial liability insurance anywhere else in the in the actually we have to re if I did we have to remove it because we are unable to enforce that. I don't see it in there. Why is that? Uh, the ORCs. Um, the statute we just X'd out. Yeah, is it in there? It's right on uh, the top. You reference it, I think. Is it forty nine thirty nine? Yes. Five? Yes. That's municipal corporation. Yeah, it is. Don't we have performance bond and other requirements in a PUD that we're allowed to require indemnification and assurances of that, uh, that it's a financially think, solid proposition the, before they start building? In the right of way, it's my understanding that we cannot, based on the ORCs. Well, wait a minute. These are general provisions. Your section, the section we're in, 1901.3, are general provisions. That should apply to everything. So if this is only meant to apply to in the right of way, then it needs to move to the right of way section, the right of way section. And then we need to have a different one for the non-right of uh, non-right of way section. Yes. What are you referring to? Section 13. Yeah. Tom said that's that he he was thinking of that as applying to being limited by the public right of way. Yes. 13. Section 13. Abandonment and removal. Okay. Page, line 150 on okay. page four. Right. If that's the case, then that should be taken out of here and found found a, find a home for it inside the the section that talks about. Uh, section C, which is well, I don't want that to be the case. Yes, I don't I, want that to be the case. I want the township to be notified, even uh, if there's been a conditional use permit to put a, uh, a WCF in a residential area, and it becomes abandoned. I want no, no, you're missing my point. Okay, maybe I am. If the abandonment and removal section 13 has been limited 
because of concerns about the public right of way, then we should have two different abandonment sections, one for the public right of way and a more broader version in the non-public right of way section. Unless I misunderstood what, you. What, what I was speaking to was the liability issues, uh, the, the, the numbers and the liability. We cannot require them to provide insurance, liability insurance, uh, anything like that. Inside and outside public right of way? This is, this is the in, the, in the public right of way. This is under what device code section? Tom is, Tom's saying, I don't know that we have a, the full section here, but as I understand, Tom's saying he watered down what you see on page 16 and 17. The liability insurance because and funding. Because those whatever. things cannot be applied in the public right of way. Under and my, and it's assuming that is true, my point is, well then fine, let's have a watered down version for the public right of way, but let's beef up as much as we can in the non-public right of way. Tell okay. me again the authority. Yeah. yeah. Tell me again the authority you're relying on to say that we can't regulate. Can we stop for a minute? Yeah, let's sure. have a let's have a five minute uh, comfort break. I need to get up and stretch it anyway. Okay. We have an insurance requirement in I agree. I don't know what it's going to be. You know, you can always say to the extent, to the extent, we should, we should this all under applicable law. There you go. Yeah. I like that. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about it in five minutes when we're back on the record. Okay. <clears throat>
son will be, my oldest son will be 10 this year. All right. Yeah. Fun age. Yeah. And I've got four little ones. Oh. Just okay. celebrated a birthday. My oldest daughter turned seven. But anyway, yeah, they, I've, I've been in the township pretty much all my life. Okay. My parents live on uh, McDowell. You related to the Craigs that used to live over off of 38th Street? No. I went to high school with Steve Craig and his brother Jim. Well, always asked this. Yeah. That's a common name. Well, but Jim, Jim Craig was the, no, because his it's father the was the referee in all these sporting oh, events. Yeah. Everybody knew him. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have to have egg on it all the time, right? <laughs> it's funny stuff. No, you I was his his middle son Steve was my age. We did, we, with Craig and Crawford, we were always next to each other in high school. Oh, okay. And he also we were roommates first year of law school. As it turned out, and by happenstance. But um, the funny story is there's a football game, and he's his dad is refing the, the eighth grade or ninth grade football team, and Glenn Glenwood at the time I think or thing Glenwood or Glenn. He's roughing their game. His son's playing in the game. He, does, he doesn't realize until after the game's over that at one point he threw his son out of the game. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Threw his own son. Threw yeah. his own son out of the game. Wow. He must he, have been being very fair. He was, that's the truth. He was yeah. being very fair. He didn't, he didn't even know his son's number or didn't recognize it. I bet I knew it was his dad. Oh, yeah. I remember that was hilarious. Oh, wow. Steve's an attorney in town. Who's he with? Himself. He's got office space there with Stan Rubin and um, Mario Gutatis that I also went to high school with. I've never been in their offices. I imagine that's probably pretty nice. It's okay. It's on market. Okay. It's the, they have, the upstairs offices, their actual offices aren't anything special. But they have a nice conference room and yeah. entry area. You get an office space. You, you ever find somebody? Not yet. Where are you at? You're in the top floor of the courtyard center. Yeah, but we have like, I don't want to say about a third, maybe two fifths of that top space. And maybe, I might say, say a third. And we had um, somebody move out and we lost a partner. Who'd you lose? Derek Lowry. Where'd Derek go? Derek was going to go over and join Bird and Fantino. Uh, and then Vern got appointed as magistrate, so now Derek has that all to himself. He's in there with Charlie Hall. Oh boy. In Charlie's building. Charlie's? In Charlie Hall's building? Yes, in Charlie Hall's building. I think there's some coordination that they're not in the same firm. Yeah. Well, Charlie did well with that building. Huh? Yeah. Well, that was a good move. He's, ne he's never been able to fill it up with anybody. Yeah, it was a good move. He bought it right. I think so, yeah. You're talking right across from Palestine. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. I mean, if he hasn't been able to fill it up, I don't know if he actually made money off it or if it's paid for itself or anything. I've never asked him. No, no. So then that's, yeah, I think he did buy it right. So. Well, his, his wife was in there for a while, and, and Rodney Bach was in there for a while. There have been different people in there at different times. It's a nice location. Yeah, I like, I like the location. Charlie's got How old's Charlie got to get? Charlie was the high, was class ahead of me, so he's at least 59, probably a little, he might be a little older. Yeah. Well, if you went to Glenwood, you don't want to school with my, my dad, probably. Not another. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Craig? Who's Dan Craig, Fred Craig, and uh, my aunt. I don't, I don't remember. remember. I don't remember. Are you related to Fred? When did he yeah. graduate? Is he Fred Craig? Yeah, is he your uncle? Yes, yeah, my uncle. Oh, okay. When did Fred he graduate? Craig. When did your dad graduate? I don't remember. Because no, I was Craig. two years in Glenwood and then it turned into Glenwood. Okay. So Fred Craig's your uncle? Yeah, that's my uncle. I know him I know really very well. My aunt and my uncle or? Fred and uh, Lori. Lori, I know him very well. Yeah. Yeah. My aunt contacted my wife. Uh, there were kittens that needed a home, and my wife wants to save the world, so she went out there and got these kids at my house that were fostering. Uh, took them to this place up in Akron over the weekend, and they end up adopting them out, and now they're in 
part of my house where you're sectioned off anyway. My that was my aunt Lori's fault. My aunt, my aunt and uncle. I'm, I used to run with my uncle all the time. He's a big runner. I don't know if, if you know him well. He used to be. He's still, he's still a big runner. Yeah, I mean, he didn't used to be. He, he didn't used to be, no. No, but he, uh, I think he's starting to, to back down a little bit, too, from the other I hope he's okay. Was he not in anywhere while he did? I don't know. I think he's all worked up over the new agenda, I think, apparently. Well, let's hope that's not the case. Yeah, I mean, we, I'm going to make short work out of that. Yeah. Um, I, for you all that don't know, I don't know this or any details, except that I, is, I do think he may be dealing with uh, a spouse that has some severe health issues. Okay. But, uh, He's a trooper and so are we, so let's, maybe we can get through this time and get it off his plate. If that's the case, I don't know. Either way, whatever happens. So long as I'm up and in downtown Cleveland at 7 15 tomorrow. Does anybody object to getting back on the record? Okay. No, there is. Okay. You okay, Tom? No. Oh. You bring me more papers for us, but okay. Love them. Is it you? Okay, one of your RCs is uh, 519. We never went off. We never went off. 51912? No, I'm calling the meeting back to order from our five minute break. 59. Accurately, everybody. I think so. 
Okay. And we were also on that the issue intended, or the 13 intended only to address abandonment removal from well, that right away. Before yeah. we get that far, I just, okay. as a general proposition, we're, that's, we're wondering, and the question then came up is, and maybe I misunderstood Tom or somebody else, I forget who said what, but the question comes up then, is there a restriction, is there a difference between right of way and non right of way in terms of what we can, if we wanted to beef this up, could we? Can we beef up the section so it applies to both, or do we have to break it into two parts depending on whether the tower is going up in the public right of way or the non public right of way? The public right of way is a different animal. Okay. I, we, we, we cannot treat them the same. Um, in terms of abandonment, or this this section. Well, in terms of abandonment, yeah. Uh, I think the way that's written, it's generic enough to cover both. Well, but the question then was, do we want to impose uh, bonding limits like the bonding and insurance and liability? And, 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 and that I don't believe we can require a bond. And you're referencing this statute uh, yeah, that's just, if it deals with a public utility. Well, I think that's what they're defining. And that's what we're dealing with. In they're all public, public utilities. utilities, yeah. Are you saying these... Um, Only a public utility can use that public they right defi right. Yeah, they, they have to be uh, certified by the Public Utilities Commission as a public utility. So even a uh, an entity that might not be Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, whatever, an entity that might simply be erecting uh, small cell technology for lease or rent by these other outfits, they, are, they would be considered a public utility also? They have shown me, yes. I the ones that have come here okay. have. Oh, you're telling me something that I suspected, but I wasn't. I wanted to, okay. Well, if we if we added certificates of insurance as a subsection to this, and they decided they didn't like it and challenged it, uh -huh. we would just, we, we just might make, lose that subsection. Correct. So just make it to uh, make it if if to the extent. Uh, allowable, permissible, or applicable law. Okay, so subsection F under 13, so we're on page 5 of line 174 and a half. To the extent permitted by law. Isn't anything we do to the extent permitted by law? Yeah, we're, we're, we're keeping it from you. Yeah, I get it. Um, Town, town, the township shall or may. How about except as may be restricted in PROWs, the well, following shall apply. Well, that's sort of like a red flag, isn't it? I'm just looking is at that, Isn't that our, exactly the point we're telling? We're, we're trying to differentiate between. Well, we can put it this way: to the extent permitted by law, the applicant shall procure, procure certificates of insurance or other satisfactory evidence to show the applicant carries general law of commercial liability insurance, blah blah blah, to the extent or whatever, whatever kind of insurance we want them to carry a bond, isn't it? Well, that's not how bonds are different than insurance. Right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. What are we talking about? Insurance or bonds? Well, so you really you want you do want you. Don't you want to specify limits of coverage? Well, so that's all of that. I think we're talking about a performance bond on, on that they're going to meet the standards of construction and the per, and maintenance of, of during the permit. We're talking about liability. The bond, the bond in this instance is generally to secure that the tower will be removed if there's an abandonment. That's, okay. usually, that's usually where you'll see that. You won't see it in the nature of a performance bond. Uh, the process of constructing it. Okay. It will be provided to secure that if you abandon it, it will be removed. Well, what if it fails and you want it removed? Well, 
Is that something different? Is that are are we needing to address that, or is, or is it or because abandonment and removal? I see what you're saying. This this only talks about removal, abandonment, and removal. So to the extent permitted by law, the applicant shall procure and present satisfactory evidence of a bond in an amount. See, I was reading removal as the township can order it removed if it's not compliant or if it's dilapidated or whatever. Too, I wasn't reading it that it had to be abandoned before it had to be removed. I was reading this that removal could be required if in the conditional use permit renewal process it turned out that they're not complying and so whatever's there we can tell them to get no, it on. I don't think that's what it says at all. Well but I don't we want it to say that? Well, if, it's, if it's abandoned or unused that's one reason to take it down. You're saying there's another reason we want to worry about that's not covered well, somewhere else. the conditional use if there's something else they're doing that's not in violation okay. of use. All right, well, I guess my confusion became when um, I was misreading this, I, I confess. I was reading this that the township is giving notice to the owner, but this is the instance where the owner is giving notice to the township and... Well, there's two sentences there. The second one says unused or abandoned and they sort of define what an abandoned is in the first sentence, shall be removed. And then it tells us how that works. That's how I read it. They have, if they're going to abandon or discontinue, they have to give us notice. And then we, that's, yeah. that would be a, 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 you know, unused or abandoned doesn't, isn't discontinued. I mean, that's, that's an addition to discontinued. Right, and so I guess that's where I was. That's where my confusion lies. I, uh, I, I think that the township ought to be able, if if there's dilapidation in a period of, of non-use, whether it's 90 or whatever, and, and we can identify that as a township and say, hey, you're not running this way. You're supposed to. It's dilapidated. Even if we haven't been notified, we ought to be able to tap a bond or whatever to get it properly removed. Well, oh, that's. 16 on the fifth page. Yeah, there's, there's a bond. And actually, I had that marked to move up as part of section oh, 13. All right. Well, maybe, maybe, I, you know what? Mr. Harrison brings up an interesting point because the way that language is, it makes a distinction between discontinued, unused, or abandoned. And but abandoned isn't the abandoned to fly somewhere if it's not used for uh, uses of time for nine days. Nine days. You, yeah. get, you get to abandon it. Yeah, that's well, not but shouldn't 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 the term discontinued be at the beginning of that second sentence? Discontinued, unused, or abandoned? How about removal upon abandonment or uh, discontinuation? discontinuation. I see that time somewhere where if, if use was discontinued for 90 days or something. Yeah, under a, a 13, a band 13A. Yeah. <clears throat> Remove, so we're going to change the title to 13 to read removal upon abandonment. Or discontinued put, use. Put, et cetera. I like et cetera. It covers a lot of stuff in titles and doesn't mean anything. How about we just say removal? Well, okay, we can just say removal. Or are we saying abandonment at all? No, just removal's fine. It's just a title. But I think we should put, since we use, we're defining, there's a difference between a, a owner giving us notice of discontinuation as, as, as opposed to an owner that doesn't give us notice and abandon, simply doesn't use it or abandons it. So my suggestion is you leave that, call it removal, leave the first sentence the way it is, but the second sentence put discontinued, comma, unused or abandoned 
shall be removed as follows. So it covers all, more than just more than just those who are giving us no, uh, notice and just, that they're discontinuous. Like as under 13A, when the township gives notice. Yeah. Um, I have a question directed to Tom or for discussion by the board. Why are we giving them 90 days from the receipt to do it? What if it's an emergency and they should be getting it down like right now because it might topple and hurt somebody? Why don't we say, shall forthwith remove? And if they're delayed in doing it or if they're planning or whatever, then we can, um, you know, cause it to... to what an emergency uh, exception built in here. Or if we don't say 90 days, we say shall forthwith remove, and then if, if there's reasonable delays, they can explain it. Otherwise, it needs to get out of there now. Well, but if you put 90 days in, I mean, there should be some number in there, because if you just say reasonable notice, then there we got there's big issues. Well, it takes us a year and a half to take down a 300-foot tower, because we have to worry about this and that, and, and bringing contractors and do this. Okay, so that, that would be forthwith if that's what it takes. Well, I like a number. Oh, do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just me. I think the 90 days might be suggestive to a person who is um, um, allowing their facility to become untended, to not do anything till the 89th day, and then come in here and say, oh, now it's going to take us four more weeks to do this because we tried on the 89th day, and this is what we're dealing with. I just don't know that I like giving them 90 if it should only take 10. Generally, the the, uh, the common denominator was was 90 days. Okay, and these other statutes? And, and, and all the other statutes. So let me I, ask I saw you, a couple for 60. Let's, let's say you issue a notice of non-compliance or whatever, or, <clears throat> or a remediation notice as a zoning enforcement officer. How long does a typical violator have to correct a violation. Once that occurs and they refuse to do it, then it goes to legal, to the attorneys, and, and it goes through the courts. How quick does it get to the attorney? Uh, there, there is no... If, if we've sent them a letter, then normally they have seven days to respond to that letter. Okay. What? Okay. So there's an emergency. Remediation. Let's say you order a condition to be remediated. As an enforcement officer, do you give everybody 90 days? Or do you have... No, but this is dealing with abandonment. All right. Or, or, or a cease of use, not of a, a, a damaged tower. Okay, I think I'm discussing damaged towers at this point with the idea of including them in our regulations so that you have some teeth as an enforcement officer for uh, a dilapidated facility that you think is a problem that you should be able to issue an order and it needs to be remediated within a certain period of time. Maybe I am going beyond the original intent of this, but I'm doing that in the mind of modifying this. I think if it was a danger, then the township would have to step in, remove the danger, and, and send charges to the, to the owner. And make a claim against the owner. Yeah. And let's face it, uh, you know, if... I think emergencies would be set a different... Yeah, if they refuse here, I think the township would still sit. We're just worried about things going being left behind. Do you have regulations that would deal with that? No, not that I know of. Any, anybody who's uh, not maintaining a tower, let's say a single tower uh, under capitalized LLC, there a provision that contemplates that the tower be maintained in good, yes. good state of repair? Yes. Is that a... <coughs> That's number four on page three. Maintenance. Page four, page three. Yep. Yeah, yes. So they have an affirmative duty to keep it in good state of repair. Yes. Um, can we can we can we contemplate that the failure to keep it in good state of repair would, will constitute an abandonment? 
we're defining abandon, abandonment to mean that if it's not, uh, if, if no, it's not used for 90 days, what if we also define abandonment to, to include those situations where it hasn't been maintained? Well, abandon is a defined term on page two, by the way. Say abandoned. Can we uh, expand the definition of abandoned to include not only cessation for the 90 days, but um, there to keep it in good state of in good condition, and state of repair? Um, after notice of uh, to, after notice from the zoning uh, well, official, we want to give them at least the opportunity to to cure before we consider. Yeah, that'll happen as a matter of course. Well, how about under number four, maintenance on page three, failure to maintain in accordance with this section after and after due notice. Shall constitute because you're given now you're given ninety days if you say it's abandoned. Shall constitute abandoned. So we want to give them ninety days to that, that point to come in. Abandonment. Okay. At least there's a provision built in there for that. Can you say that again? Section new section D under four on page three. Right. Failure to maintain a any WCF in accordance with this section shall, after due notice, constitute abandonment. No, I'm just curious. If these are sitting atop um, telephone poles or you know, there's the towers. Like, if a pop-top transformer outside wasn't working out, I think any of us would be able to tell it was abandoned. How can you tell that something is abandoned or not being used? Is it until it becomes problematic because there's no notice received? And how do you even know that it's abandoned? I mean, when does it become an issue of abandonment? Well, it starts to fall down. Well, it's it's broken and hanging it. off, and yeah. yeah. And they're notified that, hey, it's hanging, and, and because it's one of the bad guys, they don't come and... Fix it. It's only when it becomes a problem. How else would we know? You're making a good point, but I don't know how else we would know. Well, we might know, for example, if the if the uh, entity that's operating it went out of business and there's nobody around anymore, mm -hmm. and and every one of their facilities is starting to become in disarray. So it would be fair to assume that. All of them are no longer being used because the company's defunct or something like that. Well, the, if, if the equipment's uh, not dilapidated or bad condition, is it something that could be used? Another company could come in and use it instead of having them take it down and then somebody else put theirs up and then theirs becomes obtrusive or not. <coughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't. I hear work. what you're saying. Hey, what I'm thinking is if that were the case, if there was a market for them and they were functional and usable, yes, someone somebody. would buy them because, exactly your reason, <coughs> but because a permit is issued annually for that and we make sure we have somebody on record to do the maintenance and whatnot, we need that new guy to come in and sign. Otherwise, that uh, dilapidated or potentially dilapidated facility is going to be a burden on the taxpayers if it's still there. So, so the idea is, it's okay for it to stay, but somebody has to be responsible for it. And if it gets abandoned, we want to quickly act against the owner of it to get it remediated before uh, a significant lapse of time and it ends up being a burden on the township. Mm -hmm. So is the 90 days the right number? Yeah. Great time, apparently that's been sort of universal. The standard, yeah. Okay. Well, um, 
Under 13, then, should we have, should we include the bonding requirement under I mean, 13? I mean, uh, six, move 16 up to 13? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a concept. If the concept is we want the bond to ensure that there's funding available for removal, then it should come in, in my view, under 13. Yeah, I was going to move section 16 up as subsection F yeah. and say sufficient for removal. As the as who shall determine the township will determine. I actually had some language, and since this is a by application to um, that the permittee either ought to be required on application to demonstrate that he's bonded and sufficiently the amount, and that uh, if he can show that. This is the probable cost of removal be based on you know, market or based on industry standards or whatever that that ought to be acceptable at the at the time of permitting. Put the burden on them to show what the probable cost is and to bond accordingly. Is that I guess it's almost self-regulating, but you know, how do you usually take care of bonds? There's other bonds that people come into the township and say, here we need a bond. I don't know, twice the amount of the contract price or something, but I, uh, I yeah. mean... Well, what language what? do we use in other parts of the code for that purpose? So we have not used bonds at all. Oh. And as the township shall reasonably determine. Yeah. It's going to be case by case. Yeah. The last time I asked uh, uh, an amount, the legal Ooh. department bought a bond. Do you want to do that with discretion no. in the hands of the of the zoning inspector to determine the appropriate amount? No. That'd be kind of loosey-goosey. I mean, that'd be I a nightmare for the I said the township shall determine. I don't care what, you know, is it the board of zoning appeals that's the issue that the is permitting? Still, that, I think, I, I hear what you're saying. It needs to be flexible, but it still has to be a discernible standard in my view that if nobody's exercising uh, or uh, so much unfettered discretion that it becomes uh, sufficient for the removal of the tower is, I think, would be a fine standard. I, I wouldn't see me going further than that. It's going to, it's going to get presented. You're going to ask the applicant what would what, what, what you anticipate the cost to move this tower would be if you had to remove it. And yeah. I, I think that I think that no one's going to challenge that. And do we want to double it then? Or do we want to so just take sure. out the word and put in well, You know how probate bonds, for example, work. You, yeah, you, you double because then the enforcement of it to, to actually get it to happen, you might have to go through a legal process to yeah. the township that they actually hire somebody to do it. It might end up being, the cost might end up being double. That's true. Do we want to do double? Bonds can be pretty expensive. Yeah. Well, I'm not so sure we're all keen about encouraging people to do this lightly. We want them to do it responsibly and not leave the township in a worse situation because of it. We also don't want to be punitive. And to me, a double bond is punitive. Okay. Um, I, I, think, I think you leave it nebulous as, reasonably, as the township shall reasonably determine con considering the anticipated cost for removal of the WCF. Okay, so sufficient for the removal of the tower in the case of abandonment or bankruptcy as... You keep, by the way, bankruptcy, I would take that out because... That's a good point. Yeah. Abandonment, which is a defined term. Yeah. As sufficient for removal of the tower in the case of abandonment as determined in an amount... In an amount as determined by the township. Can repeat the BZA, Tom? Or can you repeat the BZA that would be determining that? Uh, it's a conditional use permit. I, I would think it would be up to the BZA. The board of uh, zoning appeals. So that would be a condition of the okay. conditions. Yeah. So 16 becomes F as modified. Would it be removed? Did you, how, how did you work that? Here's know? the whole thing. Applicants shall furnish a bond. Of course, we. It's now actually not a title, it's part, it's just un, not underlined, it's just right. the, the okay. thing will read. Applicants shall furnish a bond for a liability insurance policy no, or bond. No, no, no. Bond and liability is different. 
for a bond. Right. Performance bond? No. Completion bond? No. Just a bond. Just a bond. Showing coverage? No. In the amount of, in the amount, in such amount as shall be sufficient. To amount as shall be sufficient to cover the cost, need an article to cover the costs of the anticipated cost for removal of the W2 yeah. yeah. Which shall be disclosed by the applicant at the time of his application. You're going ahead of me. This applicant shall furnish a bond in such an amount as shall be as shall be sufficient. Sufficient to cover the expense cost of removal. The costs cover the costs of removal of the WCF. WCF in the case of abandonment. As the Board of Sunny Appeals shall determine. In an amount as determined by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Okay. I, I want to add, I, I like that language of proposing to add one other thing to in the event of abandonment. Or maybe we've dealt with this. Does abandonment include failure to maintain after notice from the? Yes, that's from we the, the, That's what we. Told that's me. how we. Did, 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 did. Okay, so you're, you've addressed my concern because I don't want them to just have to put the bond in the event of abandonment. I want to pay the cost of enforcement if it's if it's dilapidated and they fail to comply with. Did we pick it up and when we said it was abandoned, it was deemed abandoned. Okay. You comfortable that that covers that? I am, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, I have a question about... Wait, how much are you? I, I, I was looking at 519.211B2, uh, uh, it talks about uh, the revised code confer power on a board of township trustees or board of zoning appeals with respect to the location, erection, construction, reconstruction, change, alteration, removal, or enlargement of a telecommunication, telecommunications tower, but not with respect to the maintenance what I saying, uh, or, or use of. We're not, we're not doing anything to tell them how to use it. We're not doing anything to tell them how to maintain it. We're just saying you have to maintain it. We're not telling them how. We're just telling them you have to. How are you determined to do it is... Yes. Sounds good. Okay. So, 13 on page 4, we're calling ooh, removal. Ooh, I, I hear you. I'm sorry. I'm not as quick as you are to dismiss Tom's concern. Let's look at that again in just a minute. B2. Revised code sections 51902 through 51.25 confer power on a board of township trustees with respect to blah, 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 alteration removal, but not with respect to maintenance or use or any change or alteration. So or any right. minor change or alteration. Or any minor, or no, any actually, it's any change. No. It says any change. Any change or alteration. That would substantially, substantially increase the tower's height. height. They figure that at 10 feet. Anything above 10 feet would be substantial. You can't regulate height. And you can't regulate maintenance. They can't tell you how to maintain it, but I can tell you to maintain it. I, tell you, I can tell you you have to maintain it. I can't tell you how to go about doing it. Well, I think it's a good argument to make down the road. I can't tell you that you have to paint it every three years. And we're only going to be interjecting when there's an emergency or health safety issue. Or a matter. You're going to make a bond claim. Okay. Okay. okay, so section 13 beginning on page 4, it's going to be renamed remo removal in the event of, etc., etc. Um, next change is at the beginning of the second sentence where we put in discontinued, comma, unused or abandoned WCS, etc. My next question is on subsection D, the landowner's expense. Or we want to put the applicants or the permits, permittees, or is it really the landowner? Well, if we're talking about POW or, or, or 
yes. the right of way, then, then we are the landlord. This is against the owner of the WCF. Yeah, I think we want to say the, the owner of the tower, yeah. the landowner. WCF. We keep interchanging tower and WCF, but I'm going to suggest that throughout this, it shouldn't be tower, it should be WCF. Well, and even antenna, it should just both of those terms should come out. We're going to use like that. WCF, because we defined it as yeah. to include both. Yeah. Okay, so. don't limit it to, don't, don't. Tom, here's another one. You're going to have to go through everywhere it says tower and antenna, or tower, you might make it WCF. 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 Yeah. Another search throughout. Now, do, do we want to do that with tower as well? Yeah, we've defined tower and yes. antenna as covered by WCF. Okay. It's defined that way, or should be. Don't limit it to towers. All right. Yeah, we use towers a lot. I mean, look, you, and you I try to pull work. all this language from like multiple sources, and that's the sort of thing that happens. Yeah, and we're just trying to get consistency so that nobody's we use the away. broad term and everything. Sure. Just WCF. Right. And, and I think we take out landowner, just leave owner. How about permittee? Well, that's what I'm saying. What word do we want to use there? Permittee, because they're not going to post the bond until it, they're the time of issuing the permit. Okay. Um, they're, they're really not going to bond until the application is granted. You would, it would be ridiculous to put, require them to bond if the, if the right. permit isn't going to be granted. And we're so, going to put upon issuance, you know, a permittee shall. Well, and the next thing is, then in section D, we have to change where it says owner of the WCF to permit T. What happened, uh, what happened to the word landowner? We turn, turn it into permit T's. Why shouldn't the landowner? Uh, be because it's a public right of way. Well, if we're talking about both, then we're including if you're if, you're, in a, if you're a private owner who's been uh, making all kinds of money by well, my leasing space uh, to one of these uh, towers, and the tower is uh, abandoned, and there's nobody around. The owner of the tower is not around. Somebody. Well, that's why you have a bond. Yeah, that's why you have the bond. But I think the landowner should be secondarily. I think you think twice about it. He might be to his neighbor if what he allowed to be built on his property ends up wrecking the neighbor's car. But what does that have to do with? Uh, us and the protecting the interests of the township and the and the citizenry generally. Well, because if you if you if you rent your land and permit the construction of a, a tower on it, and that tower is abandoned, you, the landowner, are bear the responsibility. You've been profiting from the existence of that tower. I think it's. Well, it should, should be, be the permittee first, right? Maybe the permittee first, but, the old, but you know, if, if the, land, the permittees are gone. So, you know, in the practical sense, um, when a person comes to fill out an application, well, it's it's not not yeah. who is the applicant anyway? Don't we have to have the, doesn't the landowner have to sign off? Well, first of all, a lot of times these, these companies buy a chunk of land, they don't let lease it. I mean, my mother-in-law has a tower on her farm, and it's, they, they bought a chunk of land, a little postage stamp in the middle of the field, with a right away to drive up to it, and they're the owners of the land. Is the, is the, is the county auditor's office on that? No. I think so. Is the county auditor's office uh, permitting the, uh, the sale of landlocked uh, parcels? Yeah, yeah that, that, that would be... Uh, For the purpose of erecting well, towers? They, look, they ran a they ran the road up to the postage stamp. They own the whole thing. Obliged. I think they own yeah, the whole if, thing. If you deed the driveway up to, but they had the to, they had is to, a sufficient frontage width. And they had to they had to look. My my late father in law did this, and he got a really nice road going through the middle of his field that he could use to get to the back field. And they had to maintain the road, not him. And if it, you know, they needed maintaining, he'd call them up and they'd come out and fix the road. So he well, yeah, his tractors yeah. and equipment to the driveways on, on flag lots. Yeah. That's what they did. Well, to Terry's point, too, Terry wants to make the uh, fee simple on her uh, joint and severally accountable relative to the movement. Yeah, I think, I think that's appropriate. So is not the fee owner on the application anyway? And that would be easily done to make it so on the application? Probably. 
So we're just really throwing another item in the mix that the landowner and the and the permittee are going to be addressing in their agreement if they have one. Yeah. All right. So we want the permittee at the expense at the expense at the expense of the permittee and landowner. Oh, we don't care who pays it. It just has to be. It just has to bond them both, right? We don't care who pays the premium, do we? No. If the premium doesn't get paid, that's renewed annually. Yeah. So, so the landowner has an obligation. You know what? Imposes a duty on the landowner, at least a, a marginal duty, to make sure the permittee is getting keeping the bond in place. Because he might not get his permit renewed or his struggle with it, but it's yeah. I I, I see. What, I mean, I could go either way on that. One. So number sixteen, you wanted to read. Uh, no, no, we're 16 not at sixteen. We're at we're at thirteen B. Top of the page, page line one hundred and fifty-eight. Failure to remove the tower on ten within ninety days shall be grounds to remove the WCF. WCF in two different places. Failure to remove the WCF within 90 days shall be grounds to remove the WCF at the expense of the permittee and or, and or landowner. Yes? And or? I'd say and at the expense of You say joint and several expense to you? Yeah, joint and several. Uh, the permit holder and the man and the PM. Right. Why don't we just make the permittee required to be to include the land owner? No, well, it's just it's just stated here. Yeah. At the expense of the expense. Joint and several expense of the joint of the permit holder and the PM. The several expense of the Permittee and landowner, right? The owner. The owner. Which the uh, means right. the person who owns all the interests. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. Those words I know what it means. I'm Is that not sure how okay. translated into English? Mr. Craig, would you understand what that meant if you read uh, the fee owner? Probably not. Okay. No. Not so, I mean, without this discussion, probably not. So all landowners would be more. I, I think landowners. And the owners of all the owners of the land. Just the landowner. Well, we could put landowner parentheses s close parentheses. And then use the same language down there in D, which talks about the owner of the WCF. Yeah, right. I that agree. same language has to go down to that section too. I agree. In the WCF, I mean, here we got wireless telecommunications facility. There's again, there's no reason why we just can't call that WCF there. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at 13 or 13D on page five. Yeah. And the last sentence where it says Plain Township requires the posting, are, are we, that's what we're changing? To read? No. The right above that. shall, re, shall yeah. post. No, 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 right above that, it talks about the cost of removal again. And we're gonna put, maybe removed by the township and at, or at the joint and several expense of the permittee and landowners. The same language we used up in B, it goes down into, D also, so it's consistent. Yeah, I just don't like the last sentence, the way that reads. Plain Township requires, requires I mean, what does that mean? Yeah, we require, we need language that does require. Well, that's, you know shall. what, let's take that out because we're talking, we've added that in under F. Does that make sense, gentlemen? To remove the last sentence now that we've addressed bonding requirement in the different mm -hmm. paragraph F? Okay, so, yeah, so F says, now, and F says, 
applicant shall furnish a bond in such an amount as shall be sufficient to cover the cost of removal of the WCF in the K in WCF in the case of abandonment in an amount as determined by the Board of Zoning Appeals, period. Right? Okay, so that's, so, that's F. And so, a, a, a heads up for Tom, in an, when an application comes in, there should be a box or whatever on the application that says, applicants um, uh, estimated costs of, of removal, so that you know, and the Board of Zoning Appeals knows, how much the applicant is admitting, at least, it's going to cost to pull it out. Yep. Of course, that could be argued if it seems insufficient, the, the BZA can take that out. Off, the, off topic, the Indians are winning 7-3. to three. I'm just imagining the uh, plays of Shakespeare <laughs> being written by committee. And what would they be like? <laughs> Not, not well attended. <laughs> not after the first performance. Oh, that's poor Terry. <laughs> F2, Terry. F2. F2. <laughs> okay, so 14. Look, all right. F2, I'm, Terry, the fee owner, and permit holder. <laughs> okay. Indemnity and insurance. Whoa. That's 17. Okay, I'm on 15. Location. Location. There again, just to use the WCF term instead of uh, top communications tower. Or later on, when we say tower. Yeah. Tom, any, I mean, all of these terms that we've defined, and yet all they need to be replaced is WCF. WCF. <clears throat> so 17 becomes 16. 18 becomes 17, and this is one of the, the points that they were at on the, the uh, re zoning, regional planning, RPC says, this section 18, staff recommends that the township clarify which districts are conditionally permitted in. Okay, I want indemnity and insurance. I'm sorry. That's okay. What are we, we going to have indemnity and insurance say? Because if you're going to have it say this, you might as well not have it say anything. Extensive insurance. And didn't this where you pull in uh, maybe with Tom? Um, 16 and 17. Pages 16 and 17. Yeah. Under the liability. And indemnification. Isn't this where we pull this in, pull that in? Well, I like generally the um, page 17 where it requires indemnification and hold harmless. And that could, I think, should be the starting point, and then maybe some insurance requirements on top of that. Okay, so how about... What do you think, Trevor? How about the new, the indemnification on page 17 becomes the new 16. Again, it's my understanding that we cannot do this, but I will let to the you, extent, I'll let to you the know. Extent, you mean we can't require indemnification or we can't require insurance? Indemnification to the extent, extent required to the extent uh, uh, permissible, permissible under applicable law. Permissible under a lot of times it's not what you can do, it's so what you can get away with. Applicable yeah. law. And again, maybe different the, uh, in the non-public right-of-way scenario. So to the it's new 16 is on page 17. 16 indemnification to the extent permissible under the applicable law, applicant shall blah blah blah. Okay. I see. And so each applicant would have to challenge the permissibility under applicable law. Yeah. Yes. They may agree just to do it. Just yeah. So they don't, yeah. That happens a lot. Okay. Right. Then and the so next question is 18. Do we, do we need to, can we or do we need to beef that up? 18. Uh, well, wait a minute. Do we have insurance pulled in then? No, I'm sorry, 17. My bad. So we have identification covered, but we have insurance covered. I, I 
uh, agree. We need to, if we're going to require a certificate of insurance, it should, um, to the extent permissible by law, shall uh, then go to Tom's language on uh, on page 16. Yeah. Pull in under liability. Yeah. Pull in A and B. There is uh, yeah. A and B. So that's that's new. So that we take um, we leave insurance, or do we call it liability. I think we now call it insurance. Okay. Insurance. Insurance. Call both liability and insurance. Okay. To okay liability, liability and, and insurance. insurance. To the extent permissible, blah blah blah. And then colon, and then add in sections A, A and B. On page 16. Yes? Do, um, do we like the, the language of, of A? Applicant hereby. I like Dan with Dan. Is it the holder of, you know, what are we going to do? Permit T, holder yeah. of the permit. You know, applicant could be totally different than the permit holder. Yep. Yeah. Permit T. I, I, think, I think you may get a condition of, of issuance of the permit. So I think permit T. Shall be liable for. That not, time, as, not assumes at all. That's another term to look out for throughout the document is applicant should be permittee. And it should be hereby assumes it should be shall, shall assume or shall have. Or shall, shall be liable for. Shall have all risk of liability for damages. Permittee okay. shall I be liable for. Section B, permittee shall procure. Well, I, I, I'd say provide. Provide and maintain insurance. I don't care about certificates of insurance. Well, shall procure certificates of insurance, other satisfactory evidence to show the, the permittee. Well, why, why would you say provide? I don't want you to give me a certificate. I want you to provide the insurance. Well, all right. The certificate is just the evidence that you obtained it. I get that. Okay. Well, provide shall, and shall maintain. Pro shall provide and prove. Provide, maintain. Okay. Maintain. Just provide and maintain commercial. Those right. two things. And then you can always throw in something upon request. Permittee of the of the township. Well, you can just put a parenthetical in here that at the end it will furnish uh, certificates of insurance reflecting or evidencing payment of the requisite coverage. Shall uh, timely pro provide. Easy, easy way here if I could suggest it. B. Permittee shall provide and maintain certificates of the or shall provide insurance, liability insurance, and furnish satisfactory evidence to show coverage. No, because then, then, then the B1 becomes duplicative. <coughs> Permittee shall provide and maintain colon one and two and three. Permittee shall provide satisfa evidence satisfactory. Shall provide colon. Shall provide uh, evidence satisfactory, no, colons. Yeah. Shall provide evidence satisfactory to, shall, let's see, shall provide evidence, well, you could just say provide certificate of insurance or other evidence, satisfactory, uh, satisfactory evidence to show compliance with this. Uh, <coughs> Yes? Yes. Something like that. Okay. Like it. Remember, the whole thing starts with to the extent provided permissible by law. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, and this is, again, page 17, indemnification. And it goes on to say page 16, liability and insurance. 
Yeah, page 17 is the language for new section 16. No, new section uh, 16. And 17 is replaced with the language that we just talked about on, as amended on page 16. Identification comes first, then liability and insurance comes next. Okay, so above, on page 16, above where we did liability and insurance, there was a little ditty there about notice and 30 days. <coughs> no, 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 we've already got, that's out. We've covered that already under the abandonment language. We pulled that in already. Yep, that's already pulled The 30 days written notice? Do notice. Do notice. Okay. Okay. Now we're back to... By the way, Tom, if you want my help with this, you better call me within like three days or I won't be able to decide oh, for my own hand. Okay. Hand. Just Dang. saying, I'm trying, but it's getting sloppy over here. So we're still on page five, number 18 now? Conditional? No. Yes. 18 is, 18 is now number No, no, 18 is still 18. Because we, oh, we, new 16 no. is, is identification. 17 remain, is now liability and insurance, and 18 <coughs> remains 18. Okay, 18, uh, we should go to WCF. <coughs> okay, and that's what they're, now that's one of the sections they specifically talked about in the um, uh, zoning, PRC. <coughs> the staff recommends the township clarify which districts these are conditionally permitted in. Well, I think it's uh, clear from the zoning resolution uh, where they're conditionally permitted. I don't see any. Okay, I'm just pointing out. That's how I'm going well, to that, that's for towers and antennas. That doesn't include uh, the small cells in the right of way. That's something that we'll just have to consider that uh, for the time being, uh, you know, we just want to. We want to regulate all districts, don't we? Yeah. As far as WCFs? Yep. Potentially. But we can decide we can decide to later where if anywhere uh, additional WCFs ought to be permitted. And you know we we already have in the word towers where they can be located. Maybe we just make all WCFs. Yeah, we could just we could just substitute WCFs for towers. All WCF. Yeah, we're doing that permit all application. WCF permit application will be required to take a permit. Well, can we make applications applicants? All WCF permit applicants will be required. Yes. Well, can't. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to require the application to do it. We're going to be required to do it. Right? And it will be for um, the Plain Township Board of Zoning Appeals. Zoning Appeals. Yeah. Okay. I don't believe the last sentence, but that hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. Nineteen, then we gotta switch out the planning commission for yeah. board of zoning appeals. And then here's the additional criteria. Because you you've got the planning commission. This is from a municipal example. So I guess. So nineteen, page five, nineteen. Substitute the BZA or the Board of Zoning Appeals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. yes. Plain Township Board of Zoning Appeals, right? Yes. Okay. Right. And then in the A, B, C, E. Okay. Don't miss X. Right. And then we, in E, there is an under. We use an undefined term. Well, I think that's the point I was going to make. When you design, A kind of starts talking about using stealth technology. Stealth, what do we call it? Instead of as hold on, there's an stealth exception. technology. Stealth technology. Design utilizing stealth technology. Well, so A should say the design of the double WCF with particular reference to the design characteristics that have the effect of reducing or eliminating visual obtrusiveness. Isn't that one? Isn't that what we're saying about stealth technology? All right, how the particular reference to stealth technology A 
and any other design characteristics that have the effect of reducing or eliminating visual obtrusiveness. Why the WCF cannot be designed using stealth technology? Yes? Yeah. Under E? Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with that. And then forget about existing 20 for a moment, because we're moving that, I think. New 20 is the section we add on controlling provision. The conflict language in the event of a conflict. Right. I, and I do not have that language written down, Tom, by the way. That one I didn't get. Steve's got it. I can, That's I can share that with you, and it is um, control. control. At, ir, at item 7. Oh, no. At, so at 20. 20. 20. I've got it. Um, you have new 20 already? No, I have uh, a portion. I've got. Uh, I mean, is it to the extent? New 20 is controlling provision. Controlling provision, yes. It's the title. And the language is in the event of a conflict between um, the Provisions of found elsewhere in this zoning resolution. Provisions found elsewhere in the this in this zoning resolution. And, and there was another term John added beside conflict. Conflict or a, ambiguity. Or ambiguity. Conflict or ambiguity between the provisions found elsewhere in this zoning resolution. Zoning resolution and this article 19. And this article 19. The provisions of this article 19 shall apply. The provisions or shall control. Or shall prevail. Control. Or shall control. control. This, this article 19 shall control. XIX. Got it. Okay, now I got it. And so the existing 20 is out? The existing 20 is going to be moved. Why don't we wait until we get to section G? But that's where it's going. Can I make a suggestion, yes. guys? No, we're not going to finish this tonight. Oh. Uh, it is now a good time to uh, cash in our chips. And if, if all I had to do is uh, make any of my office at 9 a.m., I would be a hero gift, but I've got to be uh, in Cleveland, 715 for all the federal court. Okay. I hear that. Um, I would move the table. Tom, if you look on those changes in the next couple days and you have questions or anything I can help, let me know. But honestly, if I don't I'll be able to do this within the week, I may have problems starting with my own handwriting again. Do we need a table? Yeah, I move move the table. I don't think I did that already. Second. Okay, discussion. I'm going to uh, just throw this out here as a challenge, gentlemen. I literally have no comments uh, or changes on pages 8 through 14 except for one reference to stealth technology under design requirements on page 10. Does anyone else have anything significant one, to talk about on 8 through 14? Because if you don't, we can speed right through them. Well, the only thing we want to make sure of is the global the global change to WCF, the references to towers. Or... I've, I've got like four things noted. Not and I'm... I guarantee as we go along uh, that... Uh, Russian line stuff. will pick up. Yes. Okay. Additional stuff that will... Roll. Right, any other discussion that people want to have on the motion to table? Only, I do also want to say only that we are under some time constraints. If this were, in fact, an application coming from the township trustees, which I was operating under the mistaken belief that it was, 
Now I'm standing corrected earlier from discussion today that Tom um, is urging the urgency of this for us to make a recommendation to the Township Trustees and knowing that we are acting do diligently to make that happen, I think there appears to be an in, uh, a desire to do it well and do it at a, at a next meeting. That being said, do we want to have another meeting sooner or do we want to wait for the next? Can we wait a month, Tom? Uh, I, we haven't received anything for uh, about a month, a month, a little over a month from any of the well, car companies. The so I, I don't know. Nice, I, it's only I, I, I would I would think we do. We do want to get suit before. No, I think we that we probably do have some way. If we can get it done next month, well, we should be able to get it done. Yeah, I think we can get it done next so, month. When is the next regularly scheduled meeting? The 14th of June. Um, fellas, I'm going to miss that. I'm going to be out of town on vacation that week. Well, why don't we you pass your notes along to me before you go? We're doing on the 7th of June. On the 7th, we have a, uh, a busy meeting. And, and the re we don't have to do it on a Wednesday unless you guys insist. We can agree to table this motion and resume it on another date that's not a regular hearing day. The working session. The only, the only thing is, it's not. let's pick a date that at least three of us can show up to. Okay. Yeah. Are you just conflicted on the 14th that week? No, the week. week. Yeah, the week that ends. Father, it's a rough week. It's a too, because uh, my wedding <coughs> anniversary and my son's birthday fall on the 15th and 17th. Can we meet the following week or the week before? Well, the week, oh, before, week before, before, not, not a Wednesday. Not on Wednesday. Not Wednesday. Wednesday. So June, the week after, June 21st, I'm going. And that will be, we'll bring in the summer that day anyway. <coughs> well, what about May 31st? It's a Wednesday. It's an extra Wednesday. There's no there's no meaning set for that. Uh, thing. This Memorial Day week is that what you're yep. saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I know how I am at the office on a short week. I assume everyone else. Okay. Well, then let's not consider the 31st. Let's you go can, back. But no, no. I'm 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 just throwing dates out. Yeah. I figure we got an extra Wednesday when these the meetings in this organization go by, you know, second Wednesday, third Tuesday, whatever. It's an extra Wednesday. That's even, all I'm saying. Even if even if it's a short week, I mean. Blow through it on Wednesday the 31st. I, mean, I agree with John, but I'm going to do it. Okay. Ah, okay. Can you do the 31st? Ask Mr. Greg Wolf to appear. Would you? Uh, we're going to be short of member, and we don't want to have a quorum problem. Who's not the, I haven't heard from Mr. Harrison yet. On the 31st. You okay on the 31st? A Wednesday. Yes. Okay. This is a Wednesday. Yes. What time? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. So basically, we'd be postponing this three or tabling this for three weeks. Yeah, correct. I like that. That's what I like. To get it done. Also. Then we'll be still meeting in June as well. We can still get it done. Not this month. Exactly. Get it done this month. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. 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 When is the trustee meeting in, in June? Uh, second, fourth. Tuesday. Of the and how much time do we have to give them lead to review our, our recommendation from us? The recommendation will go from here to the next trustee meeting, which would be the, uh, the, uh, the 12th, no, the 13th yeah. of June. Right. They, on the 13th of June, they would set a date to hear at the following meeting. Not less than 10 days. So. So it could get done in June if 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 we do if we do this in the end of the month. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest because it's a short week and because we had a problem with the quorum the last time we picked a special date, we asked Greg to come too. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. 
And I, I mean, if there's just two people here from last time and somebody else to make a quorum, I don't, I don't that's... Uh, Only three members to make a quorum? Three, yes. I'll tell Greg to... Greg's the alternate. Oh, okay. But you can tell him also. I'll send an email. And I'm happy to have him here, even if he's extra. I mean, that's, it's the extra perspective, yeah. absolutely. So 31st of May at 6 o'clock. Okay. So the motion on the... the motion to table a further consideration of this uh, telecommunications issue, or WCF issue, is moved and seconded. Well, continued until May 31st. Uh, the discussion has been had that uh, that uh, it be done, uh, reset to May 31. Um, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, the chairman will declare this meeting. Well, let's wait a second. Uh, Tom, are you okay with doing your business at the, at the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, how long is it going to take us? Just uh, take a few minutes. That's okay. Okay. All right. So that being said, um, it is uh, 8.32 p.m. Um, and we are proposing to adjourn this meeting to be resumed are May. We, are we going to hear from I'm Tom sorry. on his agenda item? Because he says it's going to take a few minutes. If you want to do it tonight or next time? time. You have 60 well, seconds. Use it any way you want. Um, okay. Bang it out. Go for it. All right. Tom, go ahead. Uh, last meeting, we talked about uh, calling meetings and canceling meetings, and uh, I, uh, I, I didn't get an opportunity to explain why the, uh, the meeting was canceled in January. Uh, as the zoning director, I've got a budget to maintain in, in my office. Uh, each one of these meetings runs $400 to $500. Uh, with with the three hundred dollars I have to pay out, and the about one hundred and fifty dollars in time that I spend or the staff spends in putting everything together. Okay. If if this meeting is called um, just to uh, elect officers, which takes five ten minutes, uh, and, and and to discuss something, which would take another five ten minutes, then we're gone. I'm ending up. My budget is short that four or five hundred dollars. Now if we have an applicant that brings in something, then most of that is covered. But short of that, it's all coming out of my budget. All these meetings we're having here are all coming out of my budget. I need to try and, or, or I, I would hope that uh, you would be prudent enough to take into consideration that this is a lot of money for a small township zoning department to be putting out. Uh, so uh, I, I agree fully. You guys have, and the ORC says you have the the uh, the ability, or the chair does, to call a meeting. And I, I'm not arguing that. I'm just asking you guys to be proof. Yeah, it has to be meaningful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it needs to be meaningful. I would say, first of all, I took this job not knowing I was going to get paid anything. So it's all a bonus. So it's a bonus. Hey, Number hey, two. I would suggest that if we if we want to continue with the tradition of having a January meeting to bring in officers, introduce everybody, and take care of that administrative stuff, that we consider doing so and waiving our fee for that particular meeting. If in fact we want to do that, I would have no problem with that. If there is no other, if there's no other, I mean, if it's the meeting's called just for the purposes of in, of inducting the new members and, and having an election. I would concur with that. Uh, in fact, I would prefer to have it at the next regularly scheduled meeting because it doesn't do any good, in my view, to appoint new officers to do nothing for a month. That's right. Fine. Yeah. So that being said, I want to clear up that that any issue I had be before about this has been satisfactorily addressed. I don't consider it a problem, and that my my concern before was that. We all knew, as did whoever called the meeting and, and put it on the agenda for us early on, knew that that's what all that was going to happen was election of officers. And so my concern was not that it got canceled, but that it got put on in the first place and, and canceled at the last minute. That was the issue because it seemed 
Um, we vetted that, I think. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I agree with yeah. you. I think it was all... And, and, and I think everybody's intention was well. And I agree with the, right. the idea about cost effectiveness. Right. Absolutely. Well, whether it's January or February. Uh, or March or April. April. The, the first... The, 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 Chairman again in 2018. So, oh, boy. speak more Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, there, there was one other thing uh, in regards to money as well. That's the legal ad. It's been mentioned several times. Uh, the legal ad cost per word in the newspaper. It will run me from 80 minimum $80 to $200 to put a legal ad for the meeting in, in the paper, okay. depending on. I don't know how much we have to put in there. If I have to put an explanation that an eighth grader can understand, then it's going to cost me way too much money. Uh, it, so my intent was to try and uh, fulfill Steve's desire to get more explanation in it with as few words as I could possibly get by with. Sure. Um, I, I, I don't know what to do other than that. We've got to meet some kind of a common ground as far as money and words are concerned, I think. Email it to Steve and uh, let him look at it. And, uh... um, we could do that, or we could just, as a policy, um, um, is there anything that we already put in there that could be deleted? For example, I don't feel any particular desire that it has to say, Terry. Stephen Harrison, zoning chairman. I mean, that's five words or whatever. Um, could we? Could we? Uh, do we have to include that? I, I don't know. I have to check. But uh, if you think on there, my name's on be. there. If we just say zoning commission instead of those extra words, it might give us the extra budget to say instead of riparian corridor construction near waterways. I was actually actually I put. You did a nice job with that. You edited it, and it made it more clear that we were dealing with construction near creeks. I'm not sure everybody knew that would read it in the public that riparian corridor meant building near creeks. Right. And if the purpose of a public notice is to encourage public discourse about it, I think it's important within budget to at least give enough words that the average reader can say, that's something that might affect me. Well, it has to do with something near a creek. Riparian corridor. Okay. Actually, I mean, it, whose responsibility is to put the notice in the paper? Mine. Whose responsibility is to write it? Yours. So you're just, so I'm assuming, you, you, know, you know, if you want our help, we'll give it. But I mean, and, you know, if you don't ask for it, I'm not going to stick my nose in it either. Okay. okay. If you like, we can we can write it up and email it to everybody and get yeah, an opinion. I think you're doing a good job. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. I think you're doing a good job, Tom. Yeah. That's all I'm my asking. point. I don't think we need to. All I'm asking is to, for whatever, even with minimum use of words. And, and this one wasn't doing one time, it, and it wasn't you before. We've well, had this with previous zoning directors that that. That, that, that it just needs to be a little balance to make sure that the public knows. I don't want people to think, hey, we never knew you were talking about building new well, actually, actually, Steve, this last notice said dealing with repairing, I'm sorry, repairing corridor, dealing with the the, the, the setbacks. Uh, setbacks from, in from the repairing the, corridor. From, no, from the waterways or something like that. All right, well, okay. that well, doesn't matter. I just, I, I just, yeah, the point's well taken. Point huh? I don't have a lot of yeah. money to spend, and, um, and if we could just uh, try and be prudent in sure. how we spend it. Point taken. Appreciate it. Okay. No, I, I like your, I, like, I think you made your point. We, we're we're, we're going to We don't need to make any more points. It's fine. Yeah, we're, we're all on the same team. We're working we together. We want to get a balance in public involvement right. and do, meet, meet our requirements within budget. Yeah, if we do so something, good. you know, we're, yeah. And we're, and we're adults, we can tell each other what we think and move on. Sure. Towards that end, I move to adjourn. Again, second. Again, we are now at 8.40. Uh, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll see you at 6 p.m. on May the 31st. All right.